One of the most important things each year was to try and start it afresh, that it just wasn't lumbered. He was always moving around that area of, of um, what do you call it, the edge of Essex up into, up into Suffolk. Not in not into Norfolk, but that area. Also, it's a strange area, though, because it's the only part of England that's ever been invaded. Every, or, no, it's the part that when we've been invaded, we've always been invaded from there. So it's, got a lot of, it's kind of eerie there, and it's very flat. Big sky country, those winds come across from Russia. It's got some fantastic houses there. People would say constantly, when you meet somebody, and somebody say, oh, you filmed at mine. You must remember that wonderful house you filmed in. And I'd say, and quite honestly, I'd say, I, I, don't, I really don't mean to be rude, but we filmed in so many unbelievable houses there. I mean, incredible. There's a lot of money in Britain, you forget about it. <laughs> I mean, there are some incredible houses, like three, three an episode. We must have filmed in 200 unbelievable houses of various kinds, dotted on, only in that part of the world. There's a lot of me in it, having, having found the show in the first place. Obviously, you want to project yourself a, a lot of your personality, which I saw in the book. Uh, you know, you'd like to think yourself as a, a well-rounded human being, which, you know, loved your ears up to a point. Uh, the writers gave... When you, play a, when you play a character on television... Uh, you can't go outside too much. In other words, you can you, within the frames of what of what that character is, because you're telling a story every week. You want people to understand him and grow with him. It's about a certain genre. It's what I said about not growing up. If suddenly Lovejoy has suddenly grown up and married, started wearing suits and had children, you no, 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 no. You want to keep them in that suspended animation state, whereby they are always preserved as they are. It's like the classic, it's like dying young. Yeah, it's like James Dean. Who knows? Would you want to see James Dean at 70? Marilyn at 70? I don't think so. I'm, God knows I'm not comparing... I'm comparing the images of that, the saying that they're, that they're like, that they're of their time. To now bring Lovejoy back and say, yes, we could make him a married man. Forget it. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Which is why it was a fabulous time. If we come back or not, I don't think so, but it's, it's a great thing to remember because it, it was a great show to do. And it was well loved by the public and still is. I mean, I'm, it's very nice that UK Gold is one of their most successful shows, I think. The character Gimba, played by Malcolm Tierney, always uh, needs Lovejoy and, and Lovejoy needs him. As he, I think it's in the, he had that great line in the, in the first series when Gimba turns to Lovejoy and said, um, since my wife died, Lovejoy, I need someone to hate. This is one of the, it's a classic Ian Lafrenet line, which explains everything about Gimbert and Lovejoy. And I'm having it off with his sister, who's got the tattoo on her ass, which he hasn't seen yet. And I said, it's a lovely tattoo, though, Charlie. It's a butterfly. And he goes berserk. Um, when we came back again, Malcolm was doing something. Gimbert wasn't in series two. Uh, so we got him to come out from prison so that we could give Lovejoy the excuse of finding a new place to live, finding a new car, finding a new, you know, a new, uh, a new hairstyle, which is what... Because I remember in Series 1, I'd come from doing something about World War II. That my hair was very short in Series 1, which is never the way I saw Lovejoy. But we sort of dressed him up. So by the time when we came back again, the sort of character was fully formed, which is why I gave him the sort of long hair out of time so you look at him, you think he looks a bit like a 70s, 80s... He, he's, in his, he's in his element, you know. Why has he got that long hair, then? But that was part of it. Are you leading me somewhere in this conversation? Are you leading me into the certain person who is who's now trying to... <laughs> who is... <laughs> are you leading me into somebody who's been trying to get me on television with him for about five years and will never succeed? I refuse to mention his name, but he has a sort of a... The only thing he's got in common with Lovejoy is his is his hair, which is a lot greyer than Lovejoy's. And he's, more, he's got a sort of a permatan, hasn't he? Uh, no, I don't know who that person is, but God bless him, whoever he is. I think uh, one of the strengths of the show was because um, Antiques Roadshow was so popular at the time. And uh, we went out the same kind of time on the Sunday night. They didn't cross over, but it was sort of, now you have the factual part, you know, people find out something that's been in their attic for 30 years, Granny had left them. But that show was that show, and I've always thought it's purely about greed. It's about how much. It, oh, oh, it's only worth. It's not, oh, screw Auntie who left it them. You know, it wasn't, she didn't leave me anything worthwhile. 
but a, a proliferation of shows have happened since then. Because it's an area that people, oh, you never know about. You never know what you've got. And you can find something, and who knows? It happens, and it happens all the time. People come across something, and it's worth money, or in whatever, be it some strange game or some weird painting that they picked up in some flea market somewhere, whatever. And people love a bargain, and people live for chance. That's why they, pay, that's why they buy the lottery each week. That's why they go down flea markets. That's why they go in antique shops. You never know. The guy, run, I mean, the odds are stacked against you most of the time, but that one time, you don't know. That's why I love Joy. Be the kind of like he'd be the classic example of he'd be banned from most places because he can tell the real thing. It's like a professional gambler being banned from playing, you know, a game in Vegas. You can't play here, Love Joy. You, know? you can't come in here. You can't have a say in this. Here in America, it was shown on A and E. It's their top show for a while, um, and uh, they always say they got the wrong market in Australia, which they was <laughs> they they picked the wrong market. That's, that was one of the great complaints about people when they sold the show. I forget, people would go, oh, they picked the wrong market, they should have sold it to this. It was in about 35, 40 countries. Um, and as I said, I'm glad now that the, the DVD's coming out so people get a chance who've never seen it before, get a chance to... their leisure, they can watch it whenever they want. We did a show called Colour of Money, which is obviously it's about snooker, based on the same title of the... Uh, the Paul Newman, Tom Cruise movie, and we had Dennis Taylor, the former world champion, and Alex Norton played the crazed snooker player and who was managed by Charlie Gimbert. Martin Clunes played the... Um, it was the search for Queen Mary the Scots billiard table. And it was a great... I love that script. It was completely mad but wonderful. And he gave Phyllis and me a chance to do a lot together in that because we, we went looking for it together. And she had some great stuff to do, I remember, around... Around the, the, around the on location we had. I mean, she's related, she, gets very, she gets very excited relating the story of Mary's death. That was a good show. I've got such good memories of a lot of them, you know. They sl sitting here talking, they sort of come back when you, when you think about them. Football's a very big part of my life. Yeah, my dad played for Manchester United in the 50s and, and, I, and I did a film loosely based on George Best, Yes, this year. Uh, I followed United all my life. Um, I still go and see him when I can. In fact, one of the things Lovejoy, Lovejoy used to have, always in part of his workshop, and depending on how biased the director was, or whatever, and I had a producer at one point who was a Manchester City fan who used to object to this dreadfully the last two years of the show, but I had a part of the Lovejoy's workshop which had up a picture of Matt Busby and... George Best, Dennis Law, and like all the early, just a little, and the Manchester United, I used to drink from Manchester United Cup, just little hints in the show to show that he was, that's what he kept, oh yeah, it was awful when we had, and then we did a show about a violin, when we had um, uh, the guy who repaired the violins, worked out of a big truck, and was a huge Liverpool supporter. And we had these rep because the man who wrote it was a level of supporter, so we had these various little cracks at times, you know. And then we had to go to, yeah, we had to go to uh, Arsenal and film it at, uh, I hate to say, but they're a very good side. Arsenal this year, yeah. <laughs>